Number 83. What are the electron pair geometry and the molecular formula of each of the following molecules or ions? And then we have A through F. So we've done two problems just like this. So we should know the basics of how to do it or how to get an electron pair geometry and molecular structure. The basis is that each one of these comes from knowing how to draw the correct Lewis structure. So if you guys are unfamiliar with how to draw Lewis structures, go back to uh, starting at question 40 in this chapter. If you're on the playlist, you could just scroll to number 40 and I will teach you how to do a perfect Lewis structure. So for these, I'm going to assume that we know how to do them. And then we can get the electron pair geometry and molecular structure. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make like a little chart here to make everything simple. We're going to do electron pair geometry, molecular structure. We're going to put a line down here and with these uh, six questions. All right. So always find out a electron pair geometry first, which I will say is, oh, that's an ugly E. We, electron pair geometry is EPG. And then you can find out your molecular structure. Electron pair geometry will always come from your total number of, and I like to say things. Just makes it easier to understand when you're teaching it. Um, so just know that a thing is technically either going to be a bond. So you could have bonds or you could have lone pairs. And remember, a pair is two electrons, right? So two dots. So to find your electron pair geometry, it's the total number of things around your central atom. So anytime you're doing geometries or molecular structures, you only worry about the central atom. I can't stress that enough. It's not the atoms outside. It's always the central one. And then from there, you can get your molecular structure with which uh, solely bases itself off of just the total number of lone pairs. All right, so first you got to get the total things, right? All the total bonds, all the total lone pairs around the central atom. And then to get your molecular structure, you just focus on just the number of lone pairs, so just the dots. So I just want to group that. Your electron pair geometry will always just come from this first group. So you could either have an electron pair geometry being linear, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, trigonal bipyramidal, or octahedral. But your molecular structures could be that box plus these other ones, depending on if you have lone pairs. That you're going to be determining whether you have zero lone pairs, one, two, three, or four lone pairs. And the question is, well... I say that we are talking about total number of things. Just know that things is the same thing as electron pairs. All right. So your total number of electron pairs would be technically, quote unquote, the total number of things that you have. All right. Whether you have two things or three things or four things, five or six things around the central atom. So now let's get started. A. You could pause the video if you want to try to draw CLF5 by yourself. But what you should get is chlorine in the middle, surrounded by five fluorine. So I'll put one, two, three, four, five. And in this case, chlorine has one lone pair. If we draw the Lewis structure correctly, each fluorine has three lone pairs. So six total dots around um, each fluorine to give the octet rule, the eight electrons. And just know that chlorine could have more than eight because it's below the second period in the periodic table. And that's why it could have the expanded octet, so up to 12 electrons. So we get the electron pair geometry first and then the molecular structure. Always look at your central atom. And now we're just going to say how many total things are around that central atom. So it has one bond, two, three bonds, four, five and one lone pair. So if I count all of that, you have technically six things, right? You had five bonds plus one lone pair, so you had a total of six things. So six things will tell you your electron pair geometry. So you're all the way down here, six electron pairs, six things. So your electron pair geometry is only the box that's in green, so it has to be octahedral. So that's the first answer. ClF5 is octahedral when it comes to electron pair geometry. 
Now we can get our molecular structure by just zoning in on how many lone pairs there are. So out of those six total things, it looks like you had one lone pair. So this will get you your electron pair geometry, but this one lone pair will tell you your molecular structure. You're still in six land over here, but now you're in one lone pair. So your molecular structure is actually different from your uh, electron pair geometry. It would actually be square pyramid or square pyramidal. I'll just put square pyramid. And there you go. So electron pair geometry would be octahedral, but the actual molecular structure, which is more specific than your electron pair geometry, is square pyramid. That's the answer for A. B, ClO2 minus, you could pause if you want to try to make your own Lewis structure, but it should be chlorine in the middle, surrounded by two oxygens. Um, let's see. We have one, two, three, four... Five, six, just like that. And each oxygen will have two lone pairs, kind of like that. And one, two, I just want to make sure I have everything correct here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's good. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And now since it's a negative, you can bracket it off and you'll get a negative one. So. Now let's see how many total things are around the central atom, and the central atom is chlorine. Now here, your total things, well, it looks like I have two lone pairs, right? One up top, one on the bottom. You will actually count a double bond only as one thing. So if you have a double bond or if you have um, a triple bond, you still classify it as a total of just that one whole bond, one double bond, one triple bond. So in this case, I will only count the double bond as one and the double bond here as one. So how many total things are around here? You have the two lone pairs, one, two, and then you have one double bond and another double bond. So that's a total of four things. So four things is your electron pair geometry. Four things is tetrahedral. So that's your electron pair geometry for this tetrahedral. But now let's look for our molecular structure. Molecular structure comes from the number of lone pairs. In this case, it has two lone pairs, one at the top, one at the bottom. So two lone pairs. We're still in four land. But now you just go to two lone pairs, and this would be classified as being bent or angular. And I will say that it's bent. There you go. And that's the answer for B. All right, so now I'm just going to erase... Uh, I guess I'll erase both of them, right? If you, need, if you need to keep writing, you could pause the video. If you'd like. But we're going to keep moving on. C. T. E. Cl4, 2 minus. Okay, so Te in the middle, surrounded by four chlorines, one, two, three, and four. Each one of these should have one bond, one, two, three, and four. And these should have three lone pairs around each one of them to give it the octet. And now in this case, Te should have two extra lone pairs if we did the Lewis structure properly. So there should be one lone pair here and another lone pair up here. And now since it's a charge, I just have to oops, I just have to bracket it and put that it's a negative two charge. Okay, so electron pair geometry, we always look at the central and say how many total things we have. Well, we have a single bond, one, two, three, four, one lone pair, two lone pair. So that's a total of six things if you counted it, right? So six things, we're down over here. Electron pair geometry is this column only, so it has to be octahedral. Okay, and now we just zoom in on, you know, how many lone pairs. We have one lone pair up top here. We have one lone pair down here, so that's a total of two lone pairs. So two lone pairs in six land is two lone pairs over here, so it has to be 
square planar. Simple as that. C is done. Halfway through. D. PCL3. Phosphorus in the middle, surrounded by three chlorines. One, two, and three. Each chlorine should have those three lone pairs to give it the octet. And phosphorus wants to have the octet as well. It has six electrons, so it needs to have one lone pair. So let's find out the electron pair geometry. Phosphorus is the central atom. It has one, two, three single bonds, so that's three things, plus one lone pair. So it has a total of four things, four electron pairs. And four land is tetrahedral for electron pair geometry. So we have that one. But now we got to figure out how many lone pairs it has. Well, it has one lone pair. So four land, one lone pair, whoop, one lone pair. You just go over to four, one lone pair, trigonal, bipyramid. I always call it trigonal, bipyramidal. Or sorry, trigonal, pyramidal. So I'll just put that there, but it's exactly the same thing. And that's the end for D. I'm going to erase C and D so we can fit the last two. And then we are done. So E. SEF4. Lewis structure. Selenium is in the middle. Surrounded by four fluorine. One, two, three, and four. Each fluorine should have six valence electrons or six dots around each fluorine to give it the octet. And then selenium should actually have two lone pairs, or actually two dots, just like that. So, electron pair geometry, selenium has how many total things? One, two, three, four coming from the bonds, and one lone pair. So this one has five total things, five electron pairs. So five for electron geometry is trigonal bipyramid, or I was uh, taught that it was trigonal bipyramidal. Doesn't matter though. Trigonal by peer uh, middle. And now we get the molecular structure by just looking at the lone pairs. So central atom selenium had only one lone pair. So you go to five, one lone pair, seahorse or seesaw. I call it seesaw. Doesn't matter what you put. Seesaw. And last but not least, F, PH2 minus. So phosphorus in the middle, surrounded by two hydrogen. One, two, three, four, five, six, just like that. And it's a negative charge, so you just have to put a negative one. And there you go for that one. Phosphorus is the central atom. How many total things does it have? It has one, two bonds. Two lone pairs, so two and two is four total things, four electron pairs. Four for electron geometry is tetrahedral. So the first part is tetrahedral. And then now let's zoom in on, you know, how many lone pairs. There's one up top here, one down here, so that's two lone pairs. So four and two lone pairs your molecular structure is either bent or angular. I call it bent. And that's it. And that's the end for F and 83. So more practice with electron geometry and molecular structure. Hopefully this helped. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, yeah, if you want to help us out, click that subscribe button, which will help the channel out and, you know, allow us to grow, get out to all other students all over the world, which would be kind of cool. We're almost at 200 subscribers, which may seem little, but to us, it is a lot. And we thank you all for your support. See you guys all in the next question. Have an awesome day.